Today we're going to talk about Street Fighter Alpha 3. Street Fighter Alpha 3 is a perfect arcade translation. There's no missing animations, the speed is flawless, and you can adjust the speed as well. The PlayStation version sees the return of Fei Long and T-Hawk. And you may see the return of some real popular secret hidden characters, as well as some brand new hidden characters. Another feature of the game is a dramatic battle mode, which allows you to play two-on-one fighting action. A brand new addition to Street Fighter Alpha 3 is the World Tour mode, for PlayStation only. The Platinum Relics are somewhat of a hidden feature. Uh, there is no mention of the Platinum Relics in the game manual. The only way you'll find them is by playing through and doing the best you can yourself. After you complete the game, collecting all 25 crystals and defeat the final boss, Neo Cortex, you receive the Running Shoes. With the Running Shoes, that allows you to go back through the game, complete all the levels that you've already done, and uh, make attempts at uh, collecting the Platinum Relics. They're pretty difficult to get. They take the running shoes as well as a perfect run through the level. Now when I say perfect run, I mean timing. Some of the levels, when you start the level, require a certain timing to complete it perfectly throughout the rest of the, the level. So you'll run into the perfect timing of the water rising and falling. Stick to the ground, run, to not let go of the run button at all. To hold it through the entire level and no pausing. Cut as many corners as you can. Uh, whether it requires you sticking to the wall and running along the wall or uh, jumping uh, corners and levels where it switches from a, a forward to a side-scrolling area. Uh, not getting stuck on any sort of boxes, edges, hitting any enemies, taking any damage, falling in any holes, lessening your jump time in the air, Another tip is uh, to, to familiarize yourself with the level as best as possible. You need to know what's coming and how to react to what's coming. This cool move is for Metal Gear Solid. The cool move will allow you to have auto-aim capabilities for your Famous Rifle. Now to do this, you're going to have to beat the game in any level. And during the game, you're going to have to survive the tortures of Revolver Ocelot. Once you beat the game, you get the bandana. The bandana gives you unlimited ammo for all the weapons. Once you go back into the game, you go to the armory, to basement level 2, and you find the room with the Famous weapon. Make sure you don't get caught by the infrared sensors here. Now once you get the famous weapon, equip it, shoot all your bullets until it gets to these red bullets. Now these red bullets are called tracer bullets, and these tracer bullets give your gun auto-aim capabilities. Now to get it all the time, equip the bandana. Now you have unlimited tracer bullets. Now you don't have to aim. The gun aims automatically. Hi, my name is Lance with Capcom. I'm a game counselor. The cool thing I'm going to show you today for a Resident Evil 2 DualShock is called the Extreme Battle Mode. What you got to do before you get the Extreme Battle Mode is either win Leon B or Claire B. Once you win the game, you got to let the credits roll. And once the credits roll, it will give you an option to save the extreme battle mode. And that's when you choose yes. And what you do on your next game is you either put in the Claire or the Leon disc, load the game, then go into the arranged data, hit the X button, and there you have it. Extreme battle mode is a battle mode where you have to get to the police station and disarm all four bombs. And what you do, in order for you to get there, you gotta 
pick up ammo during the way. You start out with, you know, the most powerful weapons, the shotgun, the magnum, and the, your regular handgun. And from there, you have to go all the way back to the police station and dis disfuse the bombs. Hi, my name is Lance Liu with uh, Capcom. I'm a game counselor, and uh, one of the moves I'm going to show you today is uh, is for Street Fighter Alpha 3. It's going to be a custom combo of 48 with uh, Vizum Dazim. What I do basically is that I use the jab, which is the square, and the short, which is the X. Then do the slide, then the fireball motion, slide, fireball motion, slide. The secret to uh, pulling off this move is that you got to get them in the corner in the first place. And then once you get them in the corner, you just initiate square X, 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 square X. Keep on doing it. Keep it at a steady pace and you can get a good 40 hit. That should be enough damage to kill your opponent. I'm going to show you a cool move on Tomb Raider 3 on Thames Wharf, the first level of England, where you can skip the level in about a minute versus the four hours it would normally take. What you want to do, you want to head down to the first catwalk, run down the catwalk a short ways, turn around, and jump over the roof in front of you. This will take Laura to the area leading to the first secret. Hop up on the block and climb up onto the roof above her. Walk to the edge, and you'll want to jump down to this area down here. Turn around and run straight down the catwalk to the open area. At this point, it'd be a good idea to say, since it will take you a couple tries, to get over the barbed wire. It's a good idea to have full energy when you do this, because when you land, you're going to lose virtually all your energy. If you happen to jump too early and travel over the fence at the wrong angle, you're going to land on the barbed wire every time. You need to go straight out on the catwalk and turn virtually at a 90 degree angle and jump straight over the fence. So you lose a lot of energy. And once you're, once you're done with that, you just jump back up here and proceed to the end of the level. Hi, my name is Robert Johnson. I am the Associate Marketing Manager here at Capcom Entertainment. And I'm here to show you today the Pocket Alpha 3 game for the new Sony Pocket Station. I'm going to show you how the Japanese version works of the Pocket Alpha 3 game. Basically what the PDA does is it is a little mini memory card peripheral that plugs right into your PlayStation and allows you to download the characters from your original Alpha 3 game onto the Pocket Alpha 3 game in order to build up the characters while you're on the road. And then once you have them built up, you can easily upload them back to the PlayStation in order to play those edited characters. Another cool feature about Pocket Alpha 3 is that you can fight against your friends. Just take it around, point it at your friends, and use the infrared communication device at the top here to play against your friends anywhere. Wrestling is a great thing to watch when you want to get out of reality and just turn on the TV and you know watch some of the crazy drama that goes on. Is and uh, we're bringing that to you in the game. The things that I'm proud about WCW, NW, Thunder are the details, the way the characters uh, leave the ring, the way they come in, and it, it really brings the whole experience of you know being at a wrestling event into your living room. You and your buddy can go at it and just pound each other all day. You know, take out your frustrations, and I think that's important in uh, video games. Getting to go out there and beat people up for a living and not get thrown in jail. That has to be one of the best, my most favorite uh, thing about being a wrestler, for sure. Oh boy, WCW and NWO Thunder. You know, I love the game. I play it with my mother-in-law. No, I don't cheat. Please don't ever accuse me of that. I understand right now, back in the locker room area here at the Ice Palace in Tampa, Florida, we have a couple of members of the NWO, Vincent and the Giant. And what are we catching him in the heat of battle? Please. How I get out of this? You just like real life. I'm killing you. <laughs> oh. 
for, for the gamers that have played WCW Nitro on the PlayStation, uh, Thunder is definitely an upgrade in terms of the speed of the gameplay. It's, it's a lot faster than, than Nitro's engine was. Uh, there's more moves per character. There's more characters. They're all, they've all been updated. Pick me, or I'll stick your head through the mat. Can you dig it, sucker? The torture is gonna last longer on the Hollywood Walk of Shame. You'll find out who's next. <sighs> there's additional modes. Um, there's the ability to take a weapon and bring it into the ring and use it against your opponent, as you know, fans see on television. Nitro, awesome game. I mean, uh, just phenomenal for its time, but Thunder is just night and day compared to it. This is our first game with the cage matching, and uh, you know, it was fun making that. You can throw them into the side of the cage and knock them out, and you can climb up the cage and jump off and do elbow drops and all those fun moves. There's just a lot that Thunder offers to the WCW hardcore fan. There's a Battle Royal mode. Power bomb. Battle Royal is brutal because you got to have eyes in the back of your head. We didn't use motion capture. Um, basically, every move is done frame by frame by hand following a video image. If you motion capture a character, he looks stiff. It might look good on TV, but it doesn't look good in the game. When you're making a wrestling game, you have to exaggerate even more to make it look good in the game. We had this back-breaking move, so we took an apple and kind of crunched on an apple for a while, and we thought it was funny, so we left it in the game. That's sweet. Ooh, what a punch to the face. That's the strike. The best way to get good at Thunder is to have a wrestler sitting by you, behind you, just directing you, telling you what to do, and pointing out stuff. The second best thing is to learn the moves, get in there with a, with a powerful wrestler, say a, a Saturn or a Goldberg, and really get to know that character. We also include a list of moves in the instruction manual so that the gamer who maybe isn't a wrestling fanatic and doesn't know that you know, Sting should normally do the Scorpion Deathlock, um, it's all laid out for them on paper. Go out there and experiment and have fun and you're gonna learn the tricks and the, and the, uh, the tips. Mean Gene back here for PlayStation Underground. I understand that there may be a major upset in the making between the Giant and Vincent. Let's check it out. Boom! Oh! <laughs> That's boom! <laughs> All right, shoot him! We'll do that again. Okay, I won't do it no more. Come on, we'll do that again. Okay, yeah. Oh! <laughs> hey, yo, yo, Don't man. get upset, man. Right. It's just a game, man. Yo, 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 I'm out of here. Ooh, he got a bad attitude. What an attitude and a new TV. Thunder really brings the whole experience of, you know, being at a wrestling event, being at that WCW Monday Nitro event or, or Thursday Thunder event into your living room.